evening, alumni and friends. Thank you for your time and joining this event uh, for a talk with uh, Mr. Paolo Scaroni on uh, sports, uh, the art of uh, leadership. My name is Selby Bashimbo. I'm uh, president of Columbia Association of Italy. And uh, allow me briefly uh, introduce you our panelists and uh, team who were organizing this event. Paolo Scaroni is a Columbia Business School alumnus, 1973 and the chairman of AC Milan soccer team. Uh, Mr. Scarron has started his professional career at McKinsey and Company, and from 1996 to 2014, Scaroni was holding a chief of executive positions at Pil Pilkington, a Japanese-owned glass manufacturer company uh, based in United Kingdom, NL Group, an Italian multinational uh, energy company, Eni, an Italian multinational oil and gas company, and currently Scaroni is also the president of Giuliani Pharmaceutical Company and uh, deputy chairman of Rothschild Company Italy. We will be also welcoming, uh, we will be also be hearing welcoming remarks uh, from uh, uh, Scott Rosner, the academic uh, director of the Master Science in Sport Management program in the School of uh, Professional Studies at Columbia University. Um, Rosner is also a professor of uh, professional practice graduate level course uh, at Columbia. Prior to joining the faculty at Columbia, uh, Rosner was a professor in legal uh, studies and academic director of Wharton Sport Business Initiative at the Wharton School of University of Pennsylvania. Our professor uh, Dino Ruta will be moderating the talk. Professor Ruta teaches leadership and sports management at Bacconi School of Management. Ruta is also the director of FIFA Master and founder of Sport Knowledge Center. He also works for Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup and for the NBA Players Union. Since 2015, Ruta teaches international sports management at the, at the master level in sports management at Columbia University. The event is a proposal of Alessandro Mosca, uh, who graduated Columbia University School of Professional Studies in 2018 uh, with a master degree in sports management and master in global sports law. Mosca is an associate at Ruiz Huerta and a Crespo sport lawyer based in between Milan and uh, Valencia. I'm joined by Cornelia Lau, Vice President of uh, uh, CACA Italy. Uh, we would like uh, to thank you also for all participants and uh, Gaia Canevari from AC Milan uh, soccer team and Olympialex, uh, an international sport law uh, platform for technical support of the event. Dean Ras uh, uh, Director Scott Rasner, your opening remark. Grazie, Selby. Buona serata to all. Uh, my name, again, my name is Scott Rosner. I serve as the academic director of the sports management program, uh, the master of science program at Columbia. Um, and uh, very honored to be asked to join you tonight, along with my colleague, Dino Ruda. Uh, and, you know, just a little bit about our program. Uh, and, and it's funny, but most people don't associate uh, Columbia University uh, with a uh, connection with football, um, but we did have a very proud one in our program. We have uh, we work with a lot of partners, uh, La Liga, Bayern Munich, um, uh, Real Madrid, um, among others, um, and uh, very proud to do so. And so uh, looking forward to today's conversation. Uh, funny enough, my, the first international football match I ever went to uh, was in the Italian Super Cup in 1993, featuring AC Milan. Um, and when I was in, working for the World Cup, uh, World Cup Organizing Committee for the United States in 1994. Uh, and my lasting memory of that day is sheltering uh, Paolo, Man Paolo Maldini and Enzo Francescoli from adoring fans uh, who there was a pitch invasion as I kind of ushered them off the field into safety. Um, so no such controversy today. Uh, but really want to thank everyone um, for doing this and looking forward to the conversation.
Dino? So I will uh, start with the first question and then uh, uh, at the end of our interview, we will welcome uh, questions also coming from the alumni through the uh, chat box. So my first question to you, um, Mr. President Scaroni, is um, uh, let, let's start from the beginning of your uh, uh, adventure with um, uh, at AC Milan. So please, can you describe the acquisition leading uh, Elliott Management Corporation to become the majority shareholder of AC Milan, thus you president of the club? I, I will make the, the short story about that. Uh, Mr. Berlusconi, who owned Milan for many, many years and who made uh, out of Milan a great success, sold Milan in uh, uh, 2017, more exactly on the 13th of April of 2017, roughly three years ago, to a Japanese company, a Japanese a Chinese company owned by Yong Gong Li. Uh, at that time, uh, the price was roughly 600 million euros, and Mr. Yong Gong Li uh, got a loan from Elliot of roughly 300 million euros giving as a guarantee AC Milan. At that time, um, Elliot asked me to join the board as the only representative of Elliot, uh, essentially for my past experience. I already has been uh, chairman of Vicenza Football Club many years ago. Uh, I'm from Vicenza, by the way, so I have some experience around football. Uh, I became, I entered the board as non-executive, and uh, roughly one year later, um, Yong Gong Li didn't repay the loan, and so Elliot became the owner of Milan. I say the owner in the sense that uh, Elliot owns 99% of, of Milan. Uh, I became chairman, and I stayed as chairman and CEO of the company until December 2018. So from July. Uh, I, I just um, would like to mention the fact then that when I was number four in uh, uh, the Campionato and so would have entered the uh, Champions League, uh, which unfortunately didn't last year. So, the, that, so that has been the, the short story. I'm exactly. Yeah, please. The story, the story brings us uh, to December 2018 uh, with the arrival of uh, Ivan Gazidis uh, as a yes. new CEO of the club that gave, um, if I may say, a sort of a new boost uh, coming from uh, Arsenal. Um, what, what are the main guidelines on which the company, the club, has planned its growth over the coming years? No, I made clear from day one that uh, my intention was not to work for time, full time for Milan. On the other hand, I, I really didn't have the time to do it. So the arrival of Ivan Gazidis, who is a professional of football, was most welcomed by everybody, including me. Ivan Gazidis joined Milan with some ideas, uh, which are around essentially three areas. First of all, uh, to build a young team, a young team, young players who would play a very fast football, uh, much faster than usually is played in Italy, more similar to what is played uh, either in, in, in England or by Ajax, just to give an example. So young, strong, professional players. Second uh, axe, of which, which is essentially what I'm really uh, taking care of, to build a new stadium. Uh, you know that uh, the, the, the famous San Siro uh, is a great name, but is uh, totally obsolete for the football of today. I just wanted to give you a number, no? Uh, AC Milan uh, revenues from stadium is roughly 30 million euros a year. All comparable teams in Europe have revenues in excess of 100 million euros. So we have been working uh, hard together with Inter to build in Milan the most beautiful stadium in the world. I think we are progressing. We are progressing quite nicely. Um, and uh, I hope to be announcing 
uh, a success in the next few weeks or months. The third area is, of course, the area of sponsorships, because Milan needs to, to have revenues, important revenues from that front. Uh, and of course, sponsorship and uh, sport results go together. Uh, if you do not have sport results, it's not easy to get sponsorship. If you don't get sponsorship in our times of financial fair play, it's difficult to have results. So the two things have to, I say always that it's like climbing two mountains at the same time. The mountain of sport results and the mountain of revenues. The two things go together and you have to meet both targets. Um, thank you very much for, for this clear explanation. And um, uh, you started with the idea of um, one of the first pillars is uh, to, to build a young team that is able uh, to, uh, to work well together. You know, you made some examples like uh, Ajax that is quite famous uh, in Europe. Um, talking about sporting results, uh, we may say that building good, uh, a good team, uh, um, it, will, it may take a long time. Um, what has Milan, uh, AC Milan, done well and maybe less well about this uh, in the last years? First of all, we have, uh, I think, the youngest team in Serie A. So we have been meeting at least this objective to have young players. Uh, then we made also some mistakes, of course, uh, just to, to, yes, to mention one. I mean, we have been changing the coach. Uh, at the beginning of the season, the choice uh, uh, of Mr. Giampaolo was probably not a lucky, lucky choice. And and uh, but today we are quite happy with Mr. Pioli. Um, in any case, every time you try to build something uh, and, and you want to in, to be an innovator, you make mistakes. I mean, we have to accept a certain level of mistake. I hope that most of what, what has been wrong is behind us and not in front of us. Uh, certainly, um, it's not easy, it's not easy, but we do not have a, a really to do anything in the short term. We have time to improve Milan, to bring back Milan where it should be. Um, maybe later on we will come back to about the, the, the sporting side, the sporting pillar, because of um, um, if I may say, based also on my studies, you know, the sporting um, areas may be even uh, difficult to plan, uh, as you said. Um, let's move in forward. I want to talk about this COVID-19, uh, let me call it um, drama that we are living uh, in today. Uh, and we may say between Milan and New York that we'll uh, remember uh, that will remain, uh, you know, as uh, one of the two um, cities uh, really most affected from, from this virus. Um, among many statements made uh, and rumors heard, what are your thoughts about the sustainability of Italian football and therefore uh, uh, about uh, AC Milan? Because uh, there are many ideas, you know, um, related to this uh, um, the tournament of this year, you know, we stop, we play, but be, besides the news that we don't care about the news of when we will play, but it's more about thinking about the sustainability of the overall Italian football system. But listen, my, my position is quite clear. I express this position at the league level because I'm in the board of the Italian league. I want to carry out the Italian championship. Uh, we are there to play football, we want to play and we want to go to the end of this, uh, it, this championship. It is possible, uh, it is possible, it is doable. Uh, the final decision does not belong, belong neither to the league, nor to the clubs, nor to the players. Belong, first of all, to the virus and second, to the government. The government has to make a clear calendar of what we can do and what we cannot do. Uh, as you probably know, uh, until the 18th of, of May, uh, we cannot reopen our training centers, our Milanello, for example, which means that we cannot organize uh, a training 
uh, of the players uh, until the 18th of May, uh, and uh, unless the government comes back on this decision, and and it is unthinkable that we can restart to play if we do not train uh, seriously our players for at least uh, three weeks. And this is this is the problem we are facing short term. Longer term, longer term, uh, we are questioning uh, a series of things. The first one is uh, when we will have uh, games, matches. Uh, with open doors and not uh, with closed doors. Uh, football, to play football with closed doors is something strange, is something awkward. We are not used to it. And then uh, what will happen uh, to the sponsorships uh, in this case? So what, how can we, will, can we continue to have the revenues we need to compete in the world of football? Uh, these are all questions for us, not just for Milan, but for, the, all, for all the European clubs. Um, yeah, coming back to this, you know, I, you know that I, I founded the center as Daboconi a few years ago um, that studies uh, uh, the, the development of sport business. Uh, and one of the things is, uh, is about to study how to generate revenues in the field of sport, specifically football. Um, um, I understand that the sporting success uh, is um, um, is uh, important, but is not enough to become a global brand. You know, so sometimes we need to consider that becoming uh, increasing revenues is linked to becoming a global brand, as confirmed, for example, from by the seven Champions League won by AC Milan compared to two of the Manchester United. Um, so the idea is uh, to invest in a project of uh, internationalization. Um, in order to acquire new fans and partnership around the world. Um, so talking about this story about branding in the global arena, how AC Milan is working on this aspect? Now let me just start saying that Milan is certainly a global brand. We have 400 million fans all over the world. We have more fans than any other Italian club. And in every ranking, we come either third or fourth or fifth in Europe. So we still have, I say still, because it's a long time we don't win a championship, but we still have lots of fans. Now, of course, if we continue not winning, our fans become older and the young fans will follow Real Madrid or Liverpool or whoever is winning the Champions League. But we are an international brand. Uh, just to give an example, I don't know, in Indonesia, we have 5 million fans. So, which is uh, uh, still a big number. Now, the, the, the real challenge that we have uh, is, of course, we need to, to do well on the sporting side, that's, all, that's obvious, but the real, the real challenge for all the football, the European football, is how to conquer these uh, um, fans uh, which live in that part of the world, which is made out of Pakistan, India, Indonesia, and China. There you have three billion people who uh, would like to see a sport and television, and they have to choose between several sports, uh, national sports, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, they, 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 they play uh, cricket in, in India, but also, of course, basket. Uh, NBA is fighting hard to go there and to conquer fans uh, and football. Now, w the, biggest, uh, the biggest challenge we have is that if we want to conquer that part of the world, we have to play major matches, so the most important matches, at a, a uh, a, a day of the week and at a time in which uh, Chinese and Indians and Indonesians can watch us in television direct. So, in fact, what we should be doing is to play the Champions League, not on Wednesday and on Thursday in the evening, but to play the Champions League on Saturday and Sunday, possibly at one o'clock, because at one o'clock they see you in Beijing, while if you play uh, at night, 
over there is three in the morning. So we have, we have a series of choices to make as European football, uh, which are difficult, uh, but we have to make them, otherwise we will make so, uh, thank you very much. It's very clear the fact that uh, uh, building a brand um, is partly linked to what a club may do in uh, um, developing the brand. And uh, there are studies, uh, uh, as we mentioned before, that says that uh, uh, clubs may, um, uh, may acquire new fans uh, even though it, it, is, it doesn't win. Uh, obviously, it's important to be competitive, you know, so to participate in international competitions uh, and at, at the same time, these kind of competitions can be league level, UEFA level, uh, must be broadcasted um, all around the world or in, um, in uh, key target countries that can contribute to the, to the uh, obviously, to development of the league or in general the clubs. So this kind of game is, is clear and it also goes uh, to another point of the interview that is about more the management component, you know, because uh, what we, we say is, let me, let me um, summarize in this way, maybe it's uh, easy to see where AC Milan and Italian football should go, but it's not very simple to execute. And then uh, we come to the following question that is about, you know, in this case, the AC Milan first line report um, so the, it's about the corporate structure of a football club that in my, based on my research, more and more should play like an orchestra, you know, because we have great personalities, um, important skills, new skills compared to the football of 20 years ago, and, but also a, a great ability to work together. So um, I like to say, you know, that we need to have a team off the pitch that must be sometimes a stronger of the team on the pitch. What is your opinion about this? Well, uh, you know, what I've learned uh, in this world of football is that the matches are won by the players and by the coach. But the championship is won by the players, by the coach, but by the whole club, the whole organization, the management, the structures, uh, is like a company. I mean, you need to have a very efficient corporate organization in order to win the championship. Uh, so what we are trying to do, and Ivan Gazit is in particular working at it with his experience, is to build a strong organization of AC Milan. Now, as I was saying, at the same time in which you build a strong organization, which tends to be an expensive organization, because players are expensive, but everything is expensive in football, you need at the same time to be capable of building an organization which creates revenues. And the two things have to go together, because uh, many of the fans I'm meeting do not understand exactly how you can manage a football club in our, uh, uh, I mean, complying with the financial fair play. Uh, we have already been fined by the, for, for financial fair play violation. We don't want to be fined again, which means that we need to create the revenues we need to make a strong organization and a strong team. Yeah, and uh, uh, this also um, is a good uh, uh, way to, to go to our last question before collecting the questions of the, um, of the um, alumni and participants. Uh, uh, um, just to, to mention that I am going through the, the chat box. Please feel free to add some uh, questions. Uh, I already read the sister's questions and I will come back to it uh, in a few minutes. Um, uh, Mr. President, my last question is about uh, you know, your uh, uh, past experience uh, and great results in other industries among all uh, energy, oil and gas and finance. What would you like to bring from this industry to the world of football and in particular to AC Milan? Well, it's not easy to, to bring uh, the, the mentality, the experience of large corporations into a small organization, because at the end of the day, 
Uh, AC Milan and a football club, normally speaking, is a small, a small organization. No, I, I prefer to compare AC Milan to my experience at La Scala. I've been in the board of La Scala during nine years, so I've been there. And why do I compare AC Milan to La Scala? Because um, the, the, the most complex thing to manage at La Scala, like at AC Milan, are the prima donna. No? The prima donna, who are the prima donna? Well, uh, La Scala, the singers in, in football are the players. And, and, and this is the complexity of managing uh, people who are exceptional in what they are doing, uh, who have ex exceptional expectations, who normally have, are very, uh, very strict with themselves because you do not become a champion in football if you are not really very severe with yourself. Uh, otherwise, you will not. And, and these people uh, are not easy to manage. You do not manage them giving orders. Uh, it's a very complex thing to do, both for singers and for players. Yeah, and uh, th thank you very much for highlighting this uh, aspect. This is why um, I like to say you are doing uh, an incredible, um, great job at AC Milan step by step, uh, because uh, there are examples of managers, executives uh, coming from other industries that want just to copy and paste um, what they have uh, applied in large corporations. Um, maybe do not understanding that football is different and maybe requires some uh, uh, special uh, attention. And I really liked a lot the uh, metaphor or comparison with La Scala, where you have a prima donna. And let me, let me just make a, a small joke that is, uh, Sometimes prima donna are not only players, but also former players. And this uh, may create a little bit more confusion. But I don't want to enter in that uh, uh, part, as promised. Um, let, me, um, uh, let me collect one, one question uh, uh, that Sisto uh, wrote a few, um, a few minutes ago. And it's an interesting one. It goes back to the idea of a competitive balance. Um, so don't you think that modern football is uh, too biased? with a few ultra-rich football clubs reaping all benefits and then no mechanism to rebalance, uh, such as what's in place in the NBA. And this is a, comes back to also to what uh, you, we were discussing about the two levels of the European football. We have leagues, uh, we have the UEFA, and maybe the challenge of a Super League. The, the decision of UEFA has been to build the mechanism, the financial fair play, which is different from the, from the mechanism of NBA. You know? So are two different ways of trying to give uh, some austerity or some, uh, I don't know how to call it, to make uh, this sport uh, more austere of what they were before. The two choices have been different. We might argue which has been the, the, the best. If I have to, to make a, a criticism to the financial per play mechanism as it is today, is that it is kind of crystallizing the situations. In the sense that if you are, uh, I don't know, if you are winning, you have, if you have been winning, you have big, lots of sponsorship, you have the money, you can buy players, you can pay players, and you continue to win. If you are, I mean, if you are a club which wants to climb and to become, you risk to either you are extremely successful quickly or it is a long, long way before you can really compete. So this is the kind of criticism that you might make to the financial fair play as it has been invented. But I think financial fair play will change, you know, because everything is, there is an evolution going on. Um, this is, uh, I, I totally agree, and uh, this is one of the big uh, criticism to, to UEFA in general, because uh, uh, just for, um, for your information, but also for the uh, alumni 
uh, with us. Um, I'm, I just uh, uh, finished a study that is able to, um, to explain from a quantitative standpoint how the UEFA money, the money that UEFA is giving to all the clubs uh, during the, the last 10 years, they have contributed in having this unbalanced situation where, for instance, uh, Juventus is winning more and more by a Munich uh, and so on and so forth. So, in a certain way, it's UEFA that is creating this situation and maybe they have uh, a, 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 another plan in the future between, you know, Mr. Agnelli and Seferin, you know, to create international competitions uh, without um, uh, spending too much, uh, you know, attention to the, low, to the national ones. Uh, we have another question that is very much related to, to what, uh, um, uh, you know, the current situation, the COVID-19 situation is uh, from uh, uh, Schlock. Sorry if I uh, do not pronounce well the name. Uh, the question is the following. Would the impact of the virus and the advent of big tech companies change your partnership strategies to make your stadiums or facilities more fun friendly from a health perspective? say that uh, uh, our project of a new stadium in Milan, if you want to build the, the best stadium in the world, will, will also be the safest stadium in the world. So we will take into consideration the, the virus as well, because this virus, we all hope that is going to, to pass, but uh, uh, we have to take uh, uh, into consideration that it might come back another virus in the future. And when you build the stadium, you build the stadium for the next, uh, I don't know, 50 years or 60 years, not for the next um, month. So we have the opportunity in Milan to introduce among the elements to take into consideration in building the new stadium, this one as well, which is really a good opportunity, I think. We have another question from Sebastian uh, that is very much linked to this, uh, the bridge, you know, between uh, uh, Italy and United States, uh, and between uh, uh, Milan and New York. Um, do you see the, the possibility to open an office uh, in the United States um, in the future as AC Milan? Uh, we are, for the time being, uh, now, 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 of course, to open up the U.S market for the league and for AC Milan is a key priority. One of the options we have is to open up an office as league. So the league being selling TV rights in in United States. Now for AC Milan this is not a priority now. Um, another interesting question goes back, uh, always uh, talking about you know, the global approach that, uh, um, that uh, you have uh, in, uh, is a, it comes back to Pakistan and India, where you said that there are uh, a, an incredible number of fans uh, and uh, the goal potential is... Potential fans. Potential fans. Sorry, sorry. Potential fans. Uh, let me say potential football fans, but also uh, yeah. potential AC Milan fans. Um, the, the question is more about um, uh, what can you do in order to capture these young fans uh, from these countries to get both financial and uh, uh, sporting benefits uh, to the club, uh, to the AC Milan at the moment. So with uh, maybe a couple of examples of projects that you are uh, um, uh, delivering. No, yes, no, we, we have training centers for youngsters. Uh, we have 56 of them uh, in many countries. Uh, I have in Pakistan, I think we have one. We have three or four in Saudi Arabia. We are in Algeria. We are in Chad. We are in uh, Mali. We, we are in several countries in the world where we, uh, we send a trainer to train uh, youngsters to, to play football. Um, now, of course, if you want to conquer millions of fans and certainly Pakistan, India, Indonesia have a huge population. Uh, what you need to do is to, as I said before, is to, um, since people want to watch a television direct, if you do not play in time 
which is compatible with these countries, people will not watch you. And, and uh, uh, this is true for all football matches, including the football matches of AC Milan. Good point. Um, in, um, um, I still, um, um, I, uh, now I see another question, but uh, b before I, I come back to this uh, uh, alumnus, alumnus question, I want to have uh, your opinion about one topic that I think uh, is in common with many of us, that is the role of independent board member. You know, it's something that is very much uh, um, used in, uh, in, the, in the other industries. Um, in Premier League, one out of five board members uh, is independent. Um, and again, I'm, I'm doing this because uh, I just published a piece, a paper saying that the, the higher the number of independent board members in European football, the higher is the quality of a financial and sporting results. And you started, if I may say in this way, your career as an independent or board member. Um, what is your idea? Can uh, the Italian Serie A or in general football um, welcome uh, more managers from uh, uh, other industries in this kind of role? Now, let's say, first of all, if, you're, if you're, the, the club is listed on the stock exchange, the independent directors are a must, are not a choice. You have to. If you are not listed, you can do what you want. You know? In the case of AC Milan, although Elliot controls 99 plus percent of the shares, there are still a, a large number of very small shareholders uh, who own one, five, ten shares. For this reason, we have several independent directors in the board of AC Milan, uh, chosen among those who are Milanisti, of course, because you want to have people who love the club. But we have, in particular, uh, out of nine board members, you have, we have two who are completely independent. And I can say that myself as well, as an, I am an independent, because I'm not an employee of Elliot. Yeah, absolutely. And um, um, there is a, um, another question that goes back to the, maybe to a topic uh, that we didn't tackle so far, that is in general is the digit, digital strategy of AC Milan, you know, uh, where mm -hmm. technology uh, can bring the brand or um, the kind of investments that you are making, maybe also from uh, the player's side. Oh, 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 let's say these are several areas. So one area is how to reach our 400 million fans, no, because it's, it's useless from an economic point of view to have 400 million fans if you are not capable of reaching them. Uh, so this, as the, we have been developing a, a, a strategy to reach our fans, we have an app, which is Milan app, which is giving a series of news, contacts, etc. So we are starting to build uh, on this uh, on this base of funds uh, for for several reasons, uh, including economic reasons. And this is one thing. Now the second point, which for me has been new, coming back from my experience at Vicenza many many years ago, is how uh, the the uh, let's say data. Uh, for players have become crucial. No? We have for every player a series of data which define exactly their characteristics. So the, the characteristics of the players are not anymore a, a judgment, are the result of uh, analyzing uh, all the data of his performance in many, many matches. And this, I think, is pretty useful because you discover things that you haven't uh, thought just watching the player. So yes, data are key and we need to develop a special expertise in this area. Yes, I think uh, that we, we, we may conclude that there is also another comment from Tommaso that I want to share with you, President, that wants to come back to the, uh, also in this case, to the role of technology um, and uh, maybe how esports or gaming, a uh, new generation, uh, uh, can bring value, uh, you know, to, to football, to AC Milan, to, to Lega Calcio. It, it's just a comment to say that uh, 
uh, alumni are happy to contribute for, uh, uh, for, the future, for the future of the Italian football. Um, just one, one uh, final question, I just arrived, the last one, and then uh, we have to close from Nelson. Um, I read it for the first time together with you, Mr. Scaroni, apart from the minimum standards given by the government in relation to COVID-19 crisis, what are you doing as a company in terms of risk management and the health, safety and security? And is this a function of your organization that will grow in importance in the future? Thank you for your kind reply. No, the, the real answer is what will we be doing if we open up Milanello? Because for the time being, all our players are at home, uh, close there, as I am, by the way. And uh, what the only link we have with them is to send over to them some training messages in order to keep them even at home uh, in good form. But uh, the real issue is what will happen when we open up Milanello and we need to make sure that uh, the, the COVID-19 will not develop in, in Milanello. Now, uh, we are preparing a detailed plan um, with our doctors uh, to have training uh, safe uh, in, in our training center. This is the challenge we have in front of us when the government will allow us to reopen our training center. I think it's, uh, thank you very much for all the uh, answers. It's very clear, the framework that you gave us, you know, the challenge from the field, uh, the challenge to, to build the brand uh, um, in, around, you know, in other countries around the globe. Uh, I really liked a lot the prima donna, uh, prima donna examples, the La Scala metaphor, uh, with a big, uh, with a, a small uh, uh, difference that uh, AC Milan has to go uh, abroad as much as possible in order to monetize the potential fans, the fans, and to sell the, the brand. And this is the challenge of many, many clubs, sport clubs, uh, uh, not only about football, but also about other sports. Um, I have um, uh, a lot of respect for, for what you are doing, and I strongly believe that a person with your vision and uh, capabilities is also a good person for our uh, Lega culture, because the uh, the growth, the growth of, uh, of a football club uh, strictly depends on uh, the, the growth of the Lega culture. And, uh, and the more Lega culture becomes, you know, a sort of a company, a real company, I would like to see Lega culture listed, Mr. President, more than <laughs> clubs, because this will give a boost uh, to, the, uh, to, to the entire system. At the moment, uh, I see a Lega culture going lower than other, other clubs, but this is just my personal comment. Um, I leave uh, the word to you uh, in order to, to say the final remarks uh, and uh, thanks again from my side. No, I want to say to my fellow alumni of Columbia Business School that uh, uh, it has been a pleasure to talk to you about football. Uh, in these days, I'm asked to make lots of webinars, but normally on oil price. So it is for me a great fun to move from oil price to football because even if we don't play football now football is certainly more fun than uh, oil thank you and uh, have a nice and safe weekend <laughs>